I wanted a PCB that can provide isolated 5 volt power and some control and data signals including RS-485 and even a way to control a relay so I can do things that require galvanic isolation from another circuit. So I came up with this design, ordered boards from PCBWay, which is today's video sponsor. PCBWay is celebrating six years in business and I've been working with them for the past year. So if you need simple hobby level PCBs or advanced PCBs or any other special capabilities like PCB assembly, go check them out at PCBWay.com and see what they have to offer. As usual, these boards look like they came out well. So before we look at the design, let's just glance at what this board is doing. I have labeled a non-isolated and an isolated section here, and there's a thin silkscreen outline here. I should have made it thicker. So this is the non-isolated, which means, let's say I'm using an Arduino, and I want to communicate or control something across an isolation barrier. I would give 5 volts to this board and connect whatever output or input signals I need, and there's going to be an isolated DC to DC, 5 volt to 5 volt, converter. So we're going to generate an isolated 5 volts over here to power anything on here. We're going to have optocouplers and an Atom 1201 based isolated circuit, an RS-485 interface, and a relay. So when we look at the schematic we'll see all the ways we can connect everything up. And it's easier to see the isolated section on the bottom side. We have a physical separation of the ground plane on each side. So let's look at the schematic and talk about why we want to do any of this. Looking at some general reasons we may want to isolate power or signals. So if you want to prevent transferring AC or DC between different parts of a system, but still have power or signals passing through, you need isolation. For example, if there's a chance high voltage from another part of a system may damage sensitive circuits or present a risk to operators. You might want to get rid of ground loops or improve noise immunity if you have sensors with low signal levels over long cable runs and you pick up noise or offset voltages in the cables. Medical equipment is another instance where you would want isolation. And one of the industrial control applications that uses isolation is DMX512, which uses isolated RS-485 data communications. So you can have a power supply using a transformer. You get isolated power on the other side that you can drive your circuits with. And to get data or control signals across this barrier, you can use optocouplers or even digital isolators. Then you can safely control equipment across the isolation barrier. Here's the board I came up with. So I have an isolation barrier going right here. I have a five volt isolated power supply two optocouplers so I can get signals in or out across this barrier. And then I have a digital isolator also with one channel of data in and out across the barrier. Also on the isolated side, I have an RS-485 transceiver using a MAX-491 and I have a relay controlled by a simple transistor driver. And I have jumpers on the input and output of every section here so I can connect it up as I need and do what I need to do. Since optocouplers are generally slower than a digital isolator, I mostly put the optocouplers here to just do simple GPIO type on off controls, including this relay. If I want to turn the relay on and off, I can do it across an optocoupler. But for data, I used the digital isolator and I can then connect that up with jumpers over to this RS-485 and I have differential 485 out and in right here. And I can choose with jumpers if I do want to try using the optocoupler or the digital isolator just for completeness. I can try playing around with resistor values and see if I can make this work at certain speeds but I just wanted to cover all bases. Looking at the 5 volt isolated power supply, I'm using a B0505S, which is a Morn Sun DC to DC isolated converter. So that gives me an input of 5 volts and an output of 5 volts, and I can have a max 200 milliamps, but I also have to make sure I'm drawing at least 20 milliamps for this to operate correctly. And there's the representation of what's happening. You put 5 volts in, you get an isolated 5 volts out. 
and I put a power LED on the isolated output side of this regulator, so that's going to draw some current right there. And there's current needed for all these other circuits, but just in case it doesn't draw enough to give a stable 5 volts out, I put an optional load resistor here so I can force it to draw more current if needed. I can take 5 volts from Arduino or from any other source and provide it here, and it powers the whole board, both sides of this isolation barrier. So anything that's a 5 volt rail on this side is tied to plus 5 VD, and it has this particular ground symbol. Anything on the isolated side is just plus 5 V, and it has a different ground symbol, so there's no connectivity across this barrier. For the optocouplers, one can send signals in, and one can take signals out. So the way I hooked up the LED on the optocouplers, I can put a jumper to take the cathode to ground, then I can control the anode with a signal, or I can tie the anode to 5 volts and then provide a low here to control this optocoupler. And if I don't want to use either the plus 5 or the ground, I can just take any other voltage or control signal source with its ground and just control this directly. It's like its own little isolated circuit. And I set this structure up so that the polarity of in to out will be the same. If I'm controlling the anode with a positive 5 for a logic high and a ground for low, giving this 5 volts high, turns on the LED and connects a high 5 volts to the output. I just penciled in these values of current limit resistor and pull down resistor, and I also threw an indicator LED on each of these. So this is going to impact our rise or fall times, and it's going to not necessarily allow us to do fast communication. I'll link to some references about how to properly calculate resistors for the LED on the optocoupler based on the current transfer ratio, and also how to calculate load resistors on the output transistor. I'm using the PC817 series optocouplers, so if I do want to recalculate those resistors, I can look at the data sheet, get some parameters, and figure out what values I need in my circuit. I found these generic values perfectly suitable for just controlling the relay and such. This Atom1201 device is a dual channel digital isolator. Each side has its own power supply, and you can actually use this for level translation between 3.3 volts and 5 volts if you power each side with a different rail. And Analog Devices calls this iCoupler technology, so you can search that out if you want to know more about how these work. So I'm powering each half of this from the isolated or non-isolated 5 volts, and then I just have the input and output going to a header, and on this isolated side I happen to throw TX and RX LEDs, and on the input of each one of these buffers, I just put an arbitrary 100k pulldown so that if nothing's plugged in, it will keep it at a fixed logic low. The RS-485 interface, if we look at the MAX491 datasheet and some general RS-485 info, the MAX491 has a separate transmitter and receiver, so you're going from a single-ended for example, a single serial data pin coming out of an Arduino into a differential bus. And on the other end, you would have a differential receiver, which translates down to a single-ended receiver, so you can go into another Arduino or whatever it is. So for example, DMX512 uses differential communication. So if I want to talk to it from an Arduino, I would use this MAX491 to transmit out differentially, then the other end of this cable would be plugged directly into a DMX light fixture or other device. So in some cases you need a 120 ohm terminating resistor across the transmitter as well as the receiver, and that's because the characteristic impedance of these twisted pair wires are 120 ohms. So you terminate each end if needed with 120 ohm resistors. Here's a little example. If you don't use the correct termination, like only 54 ohms, you'll get this rather sloppy looking signal, but if you use correct termination, you'll get more stable looking highs and lows. And sometimes you don't need a termination resistor on the output of your transmitter. For example, if you only have one transmitter in this network, and it's at the far end of a cable, there's no need to place a termination resistor near the transmitter. So you send out a signal here, 
It goes all the way across this cable, so you would only need to terminate the end of the cable. This pull up and pull down resistor here on this receiver side, I'm not using those and I just pasted them in as 4.7K just to get the footprints in there. But in case I wanted to experiment with RS-485 fail-safe biasing, I can calculate what these should be. I don't really think I'll ever use it, just put the footprints there because they fit. To test the RS-485 part of the board, I figured it would be good if I could send some serial data in from a computer, so I'm going to use this USB to TTL interface. So I will take the transmit out of this board to the input of the atom part of this isolator and I'll set the jumpers on the RS-485 so that any data coming in through atom goes on to be received into the RS-485. Then I'm looping the plus and minus output of RS-485 back to the input and then on the 5 volt TTL side, that's going back to the atom, across the isolation barrier to the output. It'll come back into this USB transceiver and get received back from the terminal that I sent the text from in the first place. So I'll start just by looping transmit and receive on this USB board alone. So now what comes out through USB loops back and goes in USB. So I'll send text saying this is a USB loopback test. So I'll send and I receive it back. Now if I take away this loopback, now I try to send text again. This should not be looped back when I send it. So it disappeared, it got sent out, nothing came back. Now I'll hook up a common ground and I'll take the USB transmit out and receive back in. Now it's going through the board. This is a test of RS-485 loop back. I'll send that and it comes back no problem. And this is a very standard relay driver circuit. We have a Songle relay, the same kind that we tend to get on Arduino style relay control modules and it has a normally open and normally closed contact so there's a screw terminal output. Then we can have a digital control signal where a logic high would turn on the transistor and turn on the relay and a low turns it off. I've got a 1k base resistor here and that provides enough drive current to turn this relay on. The 5 volt relay has a resistance of 70 ohms. There's lots of websites with calculations for how to figure out the base resistor to be able to turn the transistor on enough, but here's a calculator. So if we're using a 2N3904 transistor, assuming HFE is 100, the load resistance is going to be the relay coil, 70 ohms. We're powering the relay from 5 volts and we're turning the base on with 5 volts. When we calculate the base resistor, 7K, right here should give enough base current to turn this on properly. So with a 1k resistor on the base, I can turn this transistor on adequately to power this load. I think this project worked out well, and I look forward to using it for DMX512 experiments coming up soon. Thanks for watching, thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this project, and happy 6 year anniversary. See you on the next video.